Turkey season upon us. We've done a Cajun brine and a Cajun injection. We smoked it and we deep fried it. If you guys want to see this, here we go. The best tip I can give you out of my experience for having the best Thanksgiving turkey is a brine. Whether it be wet or dry, that's a conversation for another day. But to do a smoked Cajun fried turkey, we are going to start with a brine. Let me show you what we got. We got good old Tony seasoning. This is the idea. It's either going to suck or it's going to be fantastic. We got the no salt added so that way we can have all this filled with flavor, not salt. We can control our salt. Two oranges. I've already zested those. We're going to use the juice as well. Black peppercorns, bay leaves, brown sugar, white sugar, and salt. This recipe will be listed below and on peltonpits.com. Debuting to the channel, our new side burner. My boys down at GMG Pits built this for me. Uh, we don't even have a name for it, so if you guys have a cool name, they'd love to hear it. Um, it's kind of like a prototype, so I'm testing it out, trying to give them my feedback and see you know, how it goes. There's some things I would change automatically. But it's pretty cool. You can roll it out of the way, put a lid on it. Uh, you can put a griddle on it. A lot of different options. If you guys are interested, you guys can hit them up, TMG Pits. Or you guys want to, you can hit me up. I can contact you with them and um, or tell you my feedback, whatever you want to do. Just pretty cool because that way I can get it completely out of the way. A lot of times I use that side burner here, but if I use it here, then it takes up all my cutting board space. So it's just a way to get it off the space. Quickly enough, we're going to bring the water up to a boil. All righty, just one whole bottle of that. Remember, this is going to be diluted with a tons of water more flavor and that's what it's about salt sugar brown sugar bay leaf black peppercorns orange zest the juice of two oranges We're just going to dissolve all this liquid. And once this is dissolved, we'll pull it off and chill it down. Brine mix is working on cooling down. It's been about 20 minutes later. We got some 12 cups of water. We won't add it all, but just by adding this water is going to be able to help cool our brine mix down uh, a little bit quicker. And I've got some left over right here that's going to go in the bag. Alrighty, I mentioned this before, uh, when we did the Traeger smoked turkey breast, we used their pellets, like that brine kit that had the brine, the pellets, and the seasoning, that I was trying something new and I wouldn't know until we got here. This is commonly found in the grocery stores, two come in a box, and I thought, well, if this is good enough to cook a turkey in, could it be good enough to brine a turkey to alleviate all the mess? Because of the comments from you guys and the feedback from the previous years, when I put a turkey into a cooler and do like a water bath, you guys say, hey, what about like a brine bag or like a big Ziploc bag because it alleviates all that mess? Well, we bought them last year and this is the same thing. So we bought them this year again. They're massive Ziploc bags, super thick. Uh, we'll leave a, a link listed below. But honestly, most people only do one turkey. So if you buy this box and then all of a sudden you brine the turkey, that's one bag. And then if you want to use the bag for um, cooking, you can, you throw it away and you just, it's not in your pantry for the rest of the year. The cost difference is, it's there. So if you guys are interested, you guys can check that out at your local grocery store. If you guys wanna check these out, like I said, I'll have a link listed. They both do the same job. And the idea is it just saves time and mess. Add a large Pyrex, it's a little bit over four cups of ice, but you get the idea. Dump that brine mixture all in that ice water. The brine's chilled down. We have about a 12 to 15 pound turkey. Just right inside, let it fill up that cavity. And there we go, completely submerged and ready to brine overnight. All righty, she's tied up, she's ready to go in the refrigerator overnight. It's kind of like in the morning now, so we're gonna look at roughly 24 to 28 hours, and then we'll take it out tomorrow and I'll show you the rest of the steps. All right, to catch you guys up to speed, simply enough, last night, I took the turkey out of the brine and you can see the system I've got set up I just let it rest overnight. I had it inverted like this on what we eventually fried in, which is this right here. And I just set the turkey on there so all that liquid could drain out. I'm a super firm believer. The best way to get crispy skin is to let it dry out. Plus when we fry it, I want as little moisture as possible on the skin. So it rested overnight. Now we have our Cajun theme still going on. This is very common in the grocery stores this time of the year. 
It comes with its own injector. I'm simply going to pull the thermometer out of the turkey. We have way better gadgets than what they can give you. So here's the deal. If I can give you any tip along the way, you guys know I like to teach you. Don't poke your turkey a thousand times. Poke it once, keep the same entry, and go through your meat like that, okay? So that way your stuff doesn't come out everywhere. So let me give you an example. Just like, for example, that, uh, I know it's on this side, but where that thermometer went, we're just gonna use that. I'm gonna use that as the injection site. And instead of poking it in different ways, I'm using that same injection site to really get down in there. And simple enough, I'm just gonna work all the way around it, all the turkey breast, the thigh, the legs and everything. Same entry point. After it's injected, I'll just take the rest of the marinade, just kind of rub it all nice and easy. Get a nice coating on here. And there we go. So overnight again, it goes. And then tomorrow is the smoke fraud. All right, before we put that turkey on the smoker, I'm just coming to you and talking to you normal. This is not a sponsored video. This is just me coming to you straight. Um, we've used smoking pecan pellets a lot lately. And there's a few reasons behind it. Really and truly because when we had friends over, they did a blind test and unanimously, we all agreed that we thought this tasted better. The holidays are coming up. We feel like a lot of times people want to up their game to impress their guests and have that little extra flavor that they typically don't get. I think this is one of those products. Um, you've already got the smoker, so why not enhance the pellet and the taste of your food as well? There's not many things that move through this back porch um, that we feel this strongly about. And a few reasons to mention. One, it's an American-made company. Um, it's a family-run business. You guys have followed me a long time. I've got daughters myself. This is a third-generation family that's got daughters in the business. And I just think that's really cool because they all stay together. Same thing that we hope for our daughters. Uh, and more importantly, they're really good people that make a fantastic product. So when we talk about supporting local, supporting American-made, this company is how we feel comfortable, you know, using their products and going forth with them. Just to reiterate, this is not a sponsored video. This is me coming, coming to you guys truthfully. If you want to step up your Thanksgiving game for their turkeys, for your roast or anything like that, give Smoking Pecan Pellets a try. Um, we'll have a link listed below in the description as well as use the code right here. So the turkey's been uh, sitting out for a few minutes. I'm going to try my best to just dab a little of the moisture off. We want this as dry as possible. You gotta remember, you're gonna smoke it, which will help dry out some of the moisture as well. But the last thing you wanna do is put this in your uh, deep fat fryer, full of moisture, okay? Just a little spray oil for a little binder. I'm gonna do uh, two layers today. We're using shake that, salt, pepper, garlic, and butter, all purpose season. I'm gonna use a light colored first. Get underneath the armpits. What is the idea of using the light color seasoning first? Because if you use the dark color seasoning, it's hard to see the light color on top of it. And since you're using two seasonings, then I don't wanna over season the turkey. Got a little Creole seasoning, and I'll show you the difference. This is why we did the light seasoning first. We have our meter, we're gonna put it right in the breast, probably this way so it has the breast and the thigh. So right through the thickest part, about right there. 
I'm gonna go breast facing the fire. Just like that. All right, so here's the idea. It could be different than some, but this is my method behind the, the madness. I'm gonna try to keep it pretty low. We're going about 200, 225 degrees, rocking those smoking pecan pellets. We have those hickory chips mixed in there, only on the low star grills. Um, I'm gonna only cook it to about 120 to 125 degrees. I want this to stay low. That way we can deep fry it just a little bit longer, okay? I know some people like to smoke their turkeys just a little bit longer, maybe like about 150. I'm gonna do a little bit different. Keep it on the grill low as possible to develop some tons of flavor from that uh, pecan shell pellets, and then we'll be able to, to fry it. Turkey's almost done. I just wanna show you a quick tip. A lot of the turkey fryers nowadays, if you have the one that specifically for turkey frying, will have a max fill line. This one actually has a max weight as well, about 18 pounds. Quick tip, whoa, that thing is smoking. If you don't have a dedicated turkey fry and you're using a pot at home, one thing you can do, add your frozen turkey before you even start thawing it out, add it to a pot, okay? Fill it up about 75% up to the top of the turkey, maybe 80% to the top of the turkey, not the pot, okay? So imagine this is oil, it's water, but we're gonna get our gauge. Once you do that, then you gauge where your line is on the pot, okay? You gotta take your turkey out. Now that gives you the, the full amount of liquid that you'll need to fill up your pot. The last thing you wanna do is start guessing how much um, oil you need. This is water, because we don't need oil right now. But uh, it just gives you the, the guideline of what you would need. So when you put your cold oil in there and start warming it up, the last thing you wanna do is fill this sucker full Add your turkey there, then watch the oil uh, flow over. We've seen hundreds of videos by now about like disastrous results. That's not what we're doing. So quick tip, put your frozen turkey in there before you even start thawing it. Add water to about 80% the height of the turkey, okay? If you don't have a good amount of space on your pot, you know, after it's done filling, you might have to change your pot. That's why these are designed to be a lot more narrow. And then once that's done, take your turkey out and that's gonna give your natural fill line. I'm not gonna harp on it too much, but safety. Uh, we have a spare because we have our deck and all that stuff, but highly recommend something like this. 50 bucks, find it at Walmart, find it online, find it anywhere. It's a lot cheaper to deal with a 50 buck oh crap than it is for you to you know, burn something down. Garage, houses, we've all seen it. If you notice I got on something flat as well, you know, if you had a like, big sheet of um, OSB or some type of wood, that might work. Um, you know, just be careful and bring it up to about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually fry it a little bit lower temperature as well. I'm gonna hit about 325 degrees. So be careful when you drop that turkey in there. You know, it's, good thing is you're not going from straight from cold to hot, which would really zap that oil temperature down. Your turkey's gonna be a little bit hotter, so that's gonna help. Once we put that turkey in there, we can adjust the temp to keep it roughly at 325, but it won't be long we take that turkey off. So I'm just gonna keep watching this. Really quick for the topping, once the turkey comes out of the fryer, we got about a half a stick of butter and I'm gonna add quite a bit of a uh, Creole, so a few, a few tablespoons, just mix that together. You want this to be a sharp tasting Cajun flavor, not a mild, because this is just gonna be brushed on as soon as it comes out of that fryer. Something like that. Alrighty, just giving you an idea, it's been about three hours and 20 minutes. This also gives you an idea of how long it would take to smoke a turkey if you just ran 225 the whole time, right? So everything's about pre-gaming for the big day. Um, it's only at 120 degrees now, so you can imagine you still have to go up a pretty good ways, and it's all, and it's been three and a half hours. So what we're gonna do is take the, thamo, or the tongs, try to drain as much liquid out as possible,
right at the very end, this turkey is still extremely hot. Come back in with that Cajun butter and just give it a good coating. Just one extra layer of flavor. We let it rest. Things I've learned, um, I probably would have brought it up just about 10 more degrees. I think maybe the sweet spot might be 130. It was only in oil for 20 to 25 minutes. You do have to adjust your knobs, right? We dropped it down to 350, it dropped the oil down. On those machines, they have that 15 minute timer. It caught us off guard, which stopped the fire. You had to start the fire again. Not a big deal, just a hassle. Um, but I understand the safety behind it because you always want to be cautious about what's going on. Maybe about 130, I think that might have been the sweet spot. Um, other than that, I think it's a fantastic representation. I'm going to give you my honest feedback. This is the deal. The, the, um, the turkey itself was 99 cents a pound, so you figure that is uh, about 12 to 15 bucks for the turkey. The injection was 6.99. The Tony seasoning was 6.18. So you're already in about 13, maybe 14 bucks uh, worth of seasonings. The oil itself was uh, 55, $52 or something like that. So does it make it worth it that much to be able to deep fry it? That's what I'm interested to see. So. I think pulling the turkey at 160 was the right move. I think it carried over way more than I expected. Uh, but just be careful about your carryover temps. If I was doing it tomorrow, I'd probably venture about even 158 to 157. Okay, so just to give you an idea. You definitely do not want to cook your turkey to 165 inside the oil and then pull it. Regardless of what people say, your carryover cooking is going to happen. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of heat. You will overcook your breast, and that's what it's all about. It's juicy turkey. Now, whether or not it tastes any good. <laughs> We're about to find out. <laughs> Dang. Mm. Mm. I think you get all the Cajun notes. You get all the, the Cajun flavor. How much does the frying really matter? Mm. Once you get past that crispy skin... Oh, that, that's got good flavor. Yeah, subtle, mm. not overpowering. I'm glad we control the salt levels. Mm. I'm gonna try some skin. I still don't think it's my best one. I agree. It's super flavorful. To be honest, I would probably just not mess around with the frying anymore. Lots of mess, lots of added cost, because you gotta buy so much oil. And it's extremely hard to reuse the oil too. Yeah, you can strain it, but then to be able to store three gallons again and how often you're going to use it. I don't know. I mean, the flavor is there. I just don't you like think, everything we did. I like everything you did. I just don't think you need to fry it. I would just say smoke it the whole way. I think one advantage about smoking, I've always said you're able to keep the temperatures lower. And anytime you keep the temperatures lower on a poultry, it doesn't push out the, uh, the moisture as much. You're able to conceal a little bit more of it. It brings the meat up a lot uh, more tender versus um, intense. And I think it just traps a little bit more moisture because mm, the pressure's not there. So that's a personal preference. That's I super like to flavorful. cook my turkeys on low. About 275 is my goal. Mm. It's go, super honey. flavorful though. <laughs> Juicy, I can I tell think that. the brine was perfect. I think the injection with that Creole butter was perfect. The seasoning was perfect. Yeah. Mm. Just something different. Mm -hmm. There you go. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Show it with your friends. What kind of turkey are you guys making this year? Kind and, of and that, what like. kind of turkey should we cook next on the channel? That's true. Because we got lots more turkeys coming. <laughs>